the government now, and especially the Singapore government, has over the years, as you said, brought back talent and is now yes. a source of talent in developing the kind of applications that citizens want. How would you describe the, a, a perfect balance between government uh, and its uh, access to talent, making sure that it's, there's still enough out there in the private sector? Uh, and especially now, I would imagine with COVID-19, the government has had to accelerate so much of its uh, initiatives that I wonder whether there's a risk in sucking up too much talent from the private sector as well. Um, is there a balance that you think needs to be found in a smart nation? First of all, there's a global shortage of talent. And in fact, even if you look at Singaporeans, I can tell you we have hundreds of Singaporeans scattered in Silicon Valley, in Southeast Asia, in China. Uh, so the first point is that actually Singapore and Singaporeans have talent, but we have been disseminated, distributed all over the world. So the first thing is wherever possible, bring our people back home, first source. The second source is grow our own people. And I'm glad to say in the last five, six years, I think our, both in terms of our university, polytechnic intake, of Infocom professionals has doubled, has trebled, in fact. And the quality of people choosing to go into software engineering, ICT, has also gone up quite disproportionately. But even that, it's still not enough. So the third element has been carefully and judiciously to complement our own local workforce by bringing in people from overseas who are truly have the skills that we need, who complement us, who have the networks, who have that extra ideas and verve to help us with the startup scenes uh, in order to grow a bigger ecosystem which is competitive. Your specific question is, is government taking too much of the local talent? And I would say my approach has been when I meet some, a Singaporean overseas, my first pitch to them is there are lots of, lots of opportunities in Singapore for you to do meaningful work. I hope you will consider the government, you will consider the local companies, and you will consider the multinational digital companies. And all the tech giants are here, and in fact, it's no secret, more and more of them are coming here. And in fact, this year has been a potentially bumper year for our ability to attract even more investments, more companies, big and small, to Singapore because they've realised this is a hyper-connected place. This is a very logical engineering uh, you know, oriented society. And importantly, during a crisis, we didn't panic. We dealt with the problems openly, efficiently and effectively. So in a sense, this actually presents us uh, a second wind of opportunity and of increasing talent. Specifically on government side, we need to have enough talent to help us envision and create the infrastructure, hardware, software rules. We need to be able to generate some of our own apps, but not all we need to be able to be, to be familiar enough with the technology so that even when we outsource, we outsource in a smart way. And then you will realise that a lot of the stuff that we're doing is open source. And we in fact want the private sector to take the ideas and the services here, license it to them, either for free or for very minimal rates, and let them run with it. I'll give you an example. Uh, we needed to screen people for temperature, <laughs> safe entry. And GovTech came up with the software, and we've made this platform technology available to the private sector so that they will develop the machines or the services which will ride on it. So I see very much a complementary role between what the government engineers are doing and the opportunities for the private sector. And that's, I think, healthy and will put us in good stead for the future.